the challenge of the Yukon. On King! On your husky! The Wonder Dog King, swiftest and strongest of Eskimo lead dogs, blazes the trail through storm and snow for Sergeant Preston as he meets the challenge of the Yukon. Sergeant Preston was typical of the small band of Northwest Mounted Police who preserved law and order in the new Northwest country, where the greed for wealth and power led to frequent violence and bloodshed. But in spite of the odds against them, Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog King met that challenge, and justice ruled triumphant. The stern face of Inspector Grayson relaxed into one of his rare smiles as the tall, broad figure of Sergeant Preston came into his office. Beside the younger Mountie was a big gray dog that stayed close beside him and seemed to reflect his master's deep respect for the authority of the Northwest Mounted Police. Well, hello, Sergeant. I'm certainly glad to see you. Sit down, won't you? Thank you, sir. I must confess I worried about you on that last assignment. It was a good job. It took longer than I figured it would, sir. Uh, as usual, Sergeant, I'm glad to see you for two reasons. The first, that you got back safely. And the second, another job that only you can do. Well, what is it, sir? Oh, this trouble in Moose Jaw. Five robberies and two killings. It all seems rather mysterious. There are no suspects. Like every town, there's a lot of gambling going on. Three of the robberies were committed after someone had won a lot of money gambling. But the only men who knew about it have perfect alibis. This will be a special assignment for you. Go to Moose Jaw... Stay there until you solve it. Yes, sir. There. Every time I send you out on a tough case, I feel a sense of relief, as if it were already half solved. Well, thank you, sir. Oh, you and that dog of yours. I wish more of our men had dogs like that. Well, there aren't any more like him, Inspector. Oh. I'll leave for Moose Jaw at once. It was a week later that Sergeant Preston entered the general store at Moose Jaw. Frenchy LaRue, the proprietor, was an invaluable source of information about the happenings in the town. Hello there, Frenchy. Hello, Sergeant. <laughs> well, so glad I am to see you. You just come to town now? Yes. Going to stay for a while. Uh, it is time someone come to stop all these crime that go on. That's what I wanted to ask you about. Only last week we have another robbery. Uh -huh. Sam Jones... He has $500 stolen that he win at poker. Was he robbed on the way home? No. <laughs> no, he is get home and is half asleep. Of course, Sam feel pretty groggy after so much poker and drink. Well, how'd the thief get in the cabin? Well, Sam, he think perhaps he don't lock door. All at once, someone hit him overhead with lead pipe or something. Of course, <laughs> it is good that Sam have good hard head that does not break. <laughs> But in morning, all his money is gone. And he has nothing but big lump like chicken egg left on his head. Well, who was playing with him that night? Well, five men play. Let me see. There was... Oh. oh, here is Chuck Adams. He can tell you. Don King. Oh, hello, Chuck. Hello, Preston. I say, call off that dog. I say, doesn't he ever forget? Quiet, boy. King does not like you, Chuck. He hates me. Well, Chuck was trying to teach me a wrestling hold a while back, and King got the idea he was trying to hurt me. He sure did. He took the seat right out of my trousers. <laughs> <laughs> and he's ready to do it again every time he sees me. Well, King never forgives anyone who tries to hurt me. I wish he didn't have such a good memory. You staying in town, Sergeant? For a while. Good. Hey, Frenchy, those are nice mucklucks. Those gray ones over there, how much will they... Uh, those, those I cannot sell you. I am saved them for Slim Taylor's grandmother. Doggone that old woman. Every time I want something, you're saving it for her. Who's uh, Slim Taylor? Oh, he is a nice young man who has come to town. I don't share your opinion of him. Oh? What's wrong with him, Chuck? Uh, I can't put my finger on it exactly. Everybody thinks he's wonderful because he takes such good care of his grandmother. I don't see why he brought an old woman like that way up here. He must support her. Poor woman. She cannot talk. You mean she's mute? Yeah, something happened to her and she can't speak a word. Lost her voice some way. 
Slim gets away with everything just because people feel sorry for her. <laughs> maybe, maybe you do not like him because he is better poker player than you, huh? Well, he's either better or trickier. Just because he takes care of a grandmother doesn't mean he's above suspicion. Well, hello, Frenchie. Hi, sir. Hello, Slim. Hello, Slim. Here is Slim now, Sergeant. Slim Taylor, this is Sergeant Preston. Hello, Slim. How are you, Sergeant? Fine, thanks. I have saved these mucklucks for your grandma, like you tell me to, Slim. Well, thanks, Frenchie. I've got her out in front on a dog sled. Why, uh, it's kind of cold out there for an old woman, isn't it? Well, she uh, doesn't like to meet people. Can't speak. Yes, I know. How about coming over to my cabin for some dinner, Sergeant? If you promise your dog won't eat me up. Well, I'd be glad to, Chuck. I'll see you later, Frenchie. Come back after dinner, Sergeant. Mm. It's getting colder, Chuck. Yeah, it sure is. There's the old woman, sitting on that sled. Your dog seems interested in her. <laughs> She's afraid of me. Gang, come away from there. I wonder she didn't scare him. She's such an ugly old hag. Chuck, uh, I heard you were playing poker with Sam Jones the night he was robbed. Yeah. You mind telling me about it? Well, no, not at all. Sam, Slim, and Bart Jacobs and Sandy McGregor and I were playing. We'd set a time limit and we're playing the last hand. It was Slim's deal. And on the second draw, I held a pair of aces and drew two more. Oh? Sam had drawn two cards, so I figured him for a full house... Or four of a kind. Yeah, that looked like your night to howl. It sure did. Of course, I threw everything but my dog team into the pot, and so did Sam. When we laid down our cards, Sam had the only thing that could beat me. A straight flush. Is that why you dislike Slim? Because he dealt you the wrong cards? I haven't said anything about it to anyone, Sergeant, but... I've felt ever since that there's something phony about it. I think Slim knows how to deal him like that. Well, that would make sense if he won the money himself, but Sam's winning it. I uh, no, but Slim doesn't like me much. I've said things he doesn't like, I guess. Oh? What, for instance? Well, everybody thinks he's so wonderful for taking such good care of his grandmother. They give him things and do favors for him on account of it. Like Frenchie holding those mucklucks today. You're not jealous, are you, Chug? I don't think he takes such good care of the old woman. He leaves her alone in that cabin outside of town and plays poker half the night. The night that Sam won all the money, Slim didn't go home at all. He stayed all night with Sandy McGregor. He said he didn't want to walk way out to his cabin. Well, it's a good thing he did. Otherwise, he wouldn't have had an alibi. His grandmother can't talk. Sam was robbed that night. That's right. Did you go home after the game? No, and it's a good thing I didn't or I wouldn't have had an alibi. Bart stayed with me and <laughs> helped me drown my sorrows. Did Bart drink a lot? Sure. Well... I mean, I guess he did. I, I was doing too well to keep track of him. You planning any more poker games? We're playing again tonight. Maybe I'll get even. Why don't you join us, Preston? Why, uh, I can't, Chuck. I may leave this afternoon. I have to go to an Indian village north of here. I see. Well, here's my cabin. Do you mind leaving your dog outside? <laughs> I still don't feel safe with him. If you'd stop being afraid of him, he wouldn't growl at you. Stay out here, King. No, you can't come in. About an hour later, Sergeant Preston drew Frenchy into the back room of the store where they could talk privately. Frenchy, I want you to help me. Oui, Sergeant. Oui. I will do anything you say. Spread the word around that I've left town this afternoon. I'll take my team and leave, but I'll be back with King. Oui. There's going to be another poker game tonight. You mean the same people are playing like the night Sam is robbed? Yes. Chuck told me. That Chuck. I do not trust him. You tell him you are going? Yes. I've told him I won't be here. Now, I want you to watch that poker game tonight. Toward the end of it, leave and meet me here back at your store and tell me who's the big winner. What you do then? I'll go to his cabin and spend the night with him. The same thing may happen that happened to Sam. If the thief comes, I want to be there. Maybe it won't happen like this. Well, it's just a chance, of course, Frenchy. Tell everyone I'll be back in three days. We, oui, Sergeant. We, oui. I will watch and meet you here tonight. Quiet, boy. It's only Frenchy. Sergeant. Yes, Frenchie. It's a 
the game over? I leave when last hand is played. Bart Jacobs is big winner. I'll go to Bart's cabin now and wait for him. No hurry, Sergeant. They're having drinks for a while afterward. You want for me to go with you? No, I'll take King and go alone. Nothing may happen, but I'll spend the night with Bart anyway. One, King. <laughs> As Preston and King approached the cabin of Bart Jacobs, they saw no light. Oh, Bart isn't home yet. Hope he left his door unlocked. <laughs> yes, it's open. Come on, fellow. As the Mountie entered the cabin, a dark figure was standing near the door. <coughs> As the big gray dog sprang for the throat of the man who had struck his master, had his teeth closed on the lead pipe that was used as a weapon. Get away, you! King sprang again, but caught and tore only the end of the parker as the man rushed through the door, slamming it behind him. The following morning, Sergeant Preston and King found Frenchie alone in his store. As the Mountie threw back the hood of his parka, French's mouth opened with astonishment. Sacre bleu, Sergeant. Well, what happened to you last night? Your head. Such big bandage. Well, somebody was waiting for Bart Jacobs last night in his cabin. and got me instead. If it hadn't been for King, I might have been killed. You did not see who it was? No, he knocked me out. Bart found me when he came in shortly afterwards. He fixed my head and I stayed there for the night. But how did they know that Bart was winner last night? That's what I'd like to know. Were all the men still there when you left? All but Chuck Adams. Chuck Adams, he gets sick early in the evening. Does not play. So Chuck left early. Did he know that Bart was winning? Oh, uh, Bart, he is lucky all evening. King tore a piece out of the man's parka, uh, the one that attacked me. I think I'll go over and see if it matches Chuck's. Maybe this time you let me come with you, Sergeant. You, you are weak. Well, come along if you want to, Frenchie. Oh, I get my parka. One, King. Sergeant. Hello, Slim. Hi, Frenchy. Hi. I wonder if I could get some supplies. Hey, you want very much? I must go with Sergeant Preston. Oh, I won't take long. Uh, I'm taking my grandmother over to Selkirk. She's going to stay with a wife of a friend of mine uh, going on a hunting trip. She's outside on the sled now. Take your time, Frenchy. I'll wait outside for you. One king. <laughs> Me? Well, what you want, Slim? Out oh, you go, fella. <laughs> What's wrong with you, King? King, stop! Black boy! Stop him! He's killing my grandmother! King. He will kill that old woman! King! Black, I say, get back! Take him out! Keep him away from me! My grandmother! Oh, that crazy Get killer. up, you! So this is your grandmother, eh, Slim? Why, it, it is man! He was disguised as a woman. The reason he didn't talk was because he couldn't disguise his voice. Oh, Chris, you fool! Why didn't you keep still? And that piece torn out of your parka, I think it matches this one in my pocket. Then he is man who attacked you last night? Yes. But King was the only one who knew it. Just a minute, Slim. I wouldn't try to leave uh, if I were you. Why, well, you haven't anything on You're under arrest. You and your grandmother. But I, I do not understand. Well, it's clear now, Frenchie. Chuck was right. Slim does know how to deal poker hands. He knew who the big winner would be before the game even started and had his so-called grandmother waiting at the winner's cabin for him when he came home. Slim always stayed with someone and had a perfect alibi. It was quite clever. Uh, that rotten cur. If it hadn't have been for that King dog... King never it... forgets anyone who attacks me. If it hadn't been for King, you'd have gotten out of town safely. This would have been your last job in Moose Jaw, Slim. Now it's your last job anywhere, isn't it, King? <laughs> These copyrighted dramas originate in the studios of WXYZ Detroit, and all characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious. They are sent to you each week at this same time. Hugh Holder speaking. This is the Michigan Radio Network.